Here's a short little video on how to take care of your wok. First we want to show you what to do for a first fry. Before you fry a meal in your Elner Ho pre-seasoned cast iron wok, fry an onion in it. Just take a medium sized white onion, cut off the ends, and chop it into small bits. Now turn on the stove and heat your wok up. And when it starts to smoke, go ahead and add a good amount of oil. Add the onions and begin stir frying. Now, you're not going to eat these onions, so just continue stir frying until they're soft or they change color. And we're trying to build the prime coat for our patina, but truth be told, this is as much for you as it is the wok. It's your inaugural fry, and when you're done with this, you'll be an old hand and the first fry will seem like nothing. So remember, don't eat these onions, just throw them away, then wash the wok, dry it off, and you're ready for your first meal. I think you're going to find the cast iron wok to be the easiest tool in your entire kitchen to keep clean. Here's Eleanor washing out the wok after cooking fish and brown bean sauce. She's using a rubber sponge with one side that's rough. Don't use steel wool and you'll notice that washing both the inside and the back side takes about 15 seconds and this is typical unless you burn on some food. After you've washed it, just wipe it dry with some paper towel and we recommend paper towel because you may get some coloration transferred to a uh, cloth towel so after you've dried it it looks beautiful and just keep it on your stovetop now a footnote you don't have to use heavy-duty rubber gloves to do this your cast iron wok will take a lot of wear and tear which I have inadvertently given it here's one careless mishap I had with a wok I got it too close to some plastic bags when I was serving food and the plastic adhered to the bottom. I'm going to begin the removal process by just simply pulling the plastic off but I noticed that it's pulling the patina off with it and taking it back down to bare metal as I do this. As I get to parts of the plastic that are thinner I can't do it with my hand so I'm going to revert to plan B and use a knife. And here you can see the light colored areas are the parts where I have uh, removed the seasoned surface and taken it down to bare metal. I continue the rehab around the bottom of the wok and remove the heaviest parts of the plastic, um, but I'm going to revert to plan C and try to scrub it off with steel wool. Since it adhered to the wok with heat, I'm going to move on to plan D and try to remove it with heat by warming up the wok and scraping the soft plastic off. Now I return to plan C and try to remove the last vestiges of any plastic remaining on the bottom. Just to be sure there's no remaining plastic residue, I'll proceed to plan F and use high heat to melt off any remaining plastic. I'm now going to wash and scrape the bottom thoroughly to prepare it for reseasoning. And just a note here, we have never had a problem with cracking from a thermal shock of taking the wok directly from the fire and running water on it. And that's why we recommend that when you're done stir frying, set the wok in the bottom of the sink and put some water in it. That will make cleanup very quick. I'm now going to re-season the wok by rubbing a thin coat of oil all over the bottom. I'm now going to complete the seasoning of the bottom of the wok by heating it over a high flame. Rotate and turn the wok so the flames go up the side. And when you're done you'll have a wok that's better than new because you'll still have that patina that you've been building up on the inside. You'll probably never come across a situation like this because now that you've seen the mistake I made, you'll never make it because you'll keep your counters clear of plastic bags or you'll exercise more caution. But now you can see why a wok can last a lifetime. Depending on how often you use your wok and how well you care for it, you may see some rusty spots appear. Here's a wok that a student brought in that has fallen into disuse and I'm going to re-season it. So the first step is to wash the rust away. I'm using a mild detergent with a metal abrasion. Now, that probably isn't necessary if you're just trying to get rid of some rust spots. Simply use the rubber sponge with the abrasive side. The next step is to apply a thin coat of oil to the bottom as we're going to re-season the surface. I work my way around the bottom applying a thin but thorough coat of oil. And once I've completed that, I'll put my stove on high to burn the oil. 
Rotate and turn the wok to be sure the entire surface of the bottom is treated by the heat. Wash and then wipe it dry. Now we're ready to do the inside. Squeeze a little oil into the wok and use a paper towel to spread it around into a thin layer all over the inside of the wok. Heat the wok over a high flame and take the wok to a temperature where the wok begins to smoke. Now turn the wok, rotate it, and work your way all around the bottom of the wok, giving this heat treatment to every part of the wok. You may have to do this process several times depending on the condition of your wok. Wash and then dry your wok. For a final touch, you may want to fry some diced onions in your wok like you did for the first fry. At the conclusion of this process, you'll have a wok that again is better than new because you've saved the patina, the natural nonstick surface that you've been building up over this time. So this wok had some extensive rust damage, but if your wok only has rust spots, then simply concentrate on those areas. Wash off the rust spots, rub oil on that area, and apply heat to treat. For safety, we recommend that when the butane stove is not in use, to release the locking lever and remove the gas canister from the stove. Here's a mistake I'm sure none of you would make, but I did, so to prevent others from doing it, I'll share it. When you start using the butane burner on your existing stove, you may reflexively reach for your existing controls. I did, and I fried a butane burner this way, and was probably lucky I didn't blow up the kitchen. So be careful. If you take good care of your wok, it should last a lifetime, but there is one thing to look out for. This is a wok that Eleanor had for over 15 years. Cast iron is a very brittle metal, so if you drop it, it may crack. The heavier cast iron flat bottom woks probably wouldn't crack if you drop them, but I'm sure you'd lose a foot or perhaps damage your floor. The other sad thing about this story is that the wok was full when I dropped it. It was one of my most brilliant wok creations. This concludes version one of the care and feeding of your wok. If you have any questions or personal experiences you'd like to share, please email Eleanor so she can pass them on to others.